I keep getting a lot of the same questions over and over again on my DIY build videos. People are struggling with basic terminology. And these are terms that you need to know if you're going to be building a DIY build. So today we're going back to school. We're going to go over all of the basic terminology for DIY builds. Amps, volts, watts, watt hours, series, parallel, what they all mean and how they relate together. Because you really need to understand these terms before you build anything out. We're going to start with a watt. A watt is made up of a volt and an amp. So you times volts times amps and you get a watt. A watt is a unit of power. Now, let's go to volts. A volt is the potential of electricity. An amp is the current of electricity. So you combine those two together and you get a watt, which again is a unit of power. A lot of times I hear people use the term power and energy interchangeably. Now, that's perfectly fine in normal conversation, but for our purposes, power and energy have two specific meanings, and you need to understand the difference. First of all, you can't store power. You can only store energy. Power is the usage of energy. So you really have to understand how those two are different, because if you don't understand them, you're really going to get confused when you build out your system. Now let's talk about parallel versus series. I have two 12 volt batteries. They have the same amount of energy in them. Now if I combine them in series, meaning I connect this positive to this negative, and now this negative and this positive become the new terminals of the battery, I now have created a 24 volt battery. Same amount of energy, I have just doubled the voltage. Now if I take these two batteries, and now if I combine the negatives and the positives, I still have a 12 volt battery, but I have doubled the capacity. A couple other terms that people get confused about is watt hours versus amp hours. Now let's talk about amp hours for a second. This battery has 100 amp hours in it. Now that's the capacity of the battery. Now to get the energy in it, you take the voltage times the amp hours and that will give you the amount of energy in it. That is the watt hours. Now let's do a deep dive and demystify what's inside a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So every store bought battery like this looks like this on the inside. This is a combination of cells. In this case it's prismatic. It can also be cylinder and what they call a battery management system board. This is a BMS. Now this controls everything that's coming in and going out of the battery and make sure they all stay within tolerance as far as heat, current, voltage, everything. It's the brain of the battery. Now there's four cells in series, but you can also combine series and parallel. And a great example of that is this one right here. It is two cells, 3.2 volt cells, in parallel together. So it's the same voltage, but it's doubled the capacity. And then each one of those groups is combined in series, just like this, to create a 12 volt battery. So that is still a 12 volt battery. It just has double the capacity of these because it's two cells in parallel than in series. So it's a 4S 2P. So that's a deep dive. Hopefully that demystifies a little bit of what goes on inside a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So inside this 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery is stored chemical energy in the form of direct current or DC. That's wonderful if you have DC appliances, maybe you're using it in your car or in a rig or something like that. But what if you want to use the stored chemical energy in your house, like AC, you know, like when you plug stuff into the wall, like the stuff you get from the grid. Well, to do that, you need to convert it. To do that, you use an inverter. An inverter is very simple in concept. You just hook this, this side up to your battery, and on this side, you can see the receptacle outlets, put out 120 volt, 60 cycle AC, just like you get if you plug something into your wall. And how these work is ingenious. Inside of them are little teeny switches. Now, they're not light switches like this, but this is an example. They're little teeny electrical switches that go back and forth. Because remember, this is direct current. We need AC current, alternating current. So it alternates it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then it brings that up, because remember, this is 12 volt. So inside this are 
electronics that bring that 12 volt into 120 volt AC. So by the time we're at this end, that's where you get that 120 volt 60 cycle AC output just like what you would get at the grid. Each inverter has some specific numbers on them that are very important. First of all, you have the system voltage. This is a 12 volt inverter, meaning it's going to work with a 12 volt battery. You can get 12, 24, 36, 48. You can get it in any voltage, but you want to make sure your inverter and your battery match. The second thing is the amount of power it'll output. This one will do 1,280 watts of power, which is perfect because this battery can also output 1,000. 280 watts of power so they're a perfect match so when you're building out your system you want to make sure these two components match so you've been having a lot of fun you've been using your battery you've been blow drying your hair you've been watching television and you've consumed all of the energy in the battery and it is now empty well how do you get energy back into the battery well you use a solar panel of course so for our purposes, let's pretend that you have a 75 volt solar panel. Well, this is a 12.8 volt nominal battery and fully charged it's 14.6 volts. Now, if you hook up a 75 volt solar panel to this battery, you're gonna zap it. So what you need to do is have a charge controller. And the reason we're using a 75 volt solar panel is because I have a 75 volt charge controller. So what this will do is it'll take that 75 volt solar panel and it'll turn it into useful power coming into the battery. This is a 7515, which means it's going to take that 75 volts from your panel, turn it into 14.6 volts at up to 15 amps. So it's going to charge your battery nicely and it's going to charge it at a relatively low C rate. And that is our next topic. Every battery has a specific C rating. This is a 100 amp hour battery. It has a C rating of 100 amps. That means it can output 100 amps of power. And it can also be charged at 100 amps in. Now this is going to be charged at no more than 15 amps, which means it's going to have a lower C rating. These batteries, while they can do 100 amps output and in, they really prefer to be less. So the fact that this is going to charge it at 15 amps, which is a lower C rating, is going to make your battery much happier. So every battery has a C rating for charge and discharge. So you want to make sure when you spec out your system that it's within those tolerable allowances or the BMS inside will shut it down if it gets too much energy in or is trying to put out too much energy. Now that we've gone over the basics, it's time to configure our system and put everything together into one unit. Now, I'm going to give you some examples, but I'm not going to do your homework for you. You're going to have to take what you've learned here today and build out your own system. But I am going to go over some examples just to reinforce what we've talked about. So let's say we want to run something that is 5,000 watts of power. Could we do it with this system? No. Now, why not? Well, because we know that this can only output 1,280 watts of power. So remember, you have to figure out how much power you're going to need and how much energy you're going to need, which is how much power you're going to use over time. So let's do a different way. Let's say we only want to run 800 watts of power. Now, 800 watts will run this because this can do 12,800 watts of power. But how long are we going to run it? Are we going to run it for one hour or for 10 hours? Now, remember, we know how to get energy. Energy is power times time. So if we're going to be running something that's 800 watts for one hour, that's 800 watt hours. Now this is 1,280 watt hours. We know we could run it for one hour, no problem. But let's say we want to run it for five hours. Well, you're going to need to get more batteries. So the inverter would be fine, but you would need to have more stored energy. So these are things to think about as you configure your system. So hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of the basic terms and how all these pieces work together. So now you can have better success at configuring your own system. Whether you're buying battery, whether you're building a battery, whether you're building your whole system, whether you're building a DIY system, or whether you're getting a portable power station solar generator. Now you understand how all of these things work together and how power and energy are related and how you have to understand what your power needs are and what your energy needs are 
to properly size whatever system you're going to get. If anybody has any questions, please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Talk to everyone soon.